Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for stopping in, taking another look at our uh, weekly uh, check-ins. Um, I don't have anything to show this week, but I do have a couple things to talk about. Um, one of the issues uh, that I've been facing lately with uh, getting a new release out there is obviously the issue everybody's having with exclusive mode. Um, as I've said before, it's not something I want to handle in application anymore because Benjamin is working on a far better way to do this. Uh, so that's, I'm going to, you know, focus on incorporating what he comes up with into Input Mapper uh, for the time being. Um, HID Guardian, which is the name of the uh, filter driver that he's doing that'll uh, prevent um, other programs from accessing the controller and in turn uh, programs like Input Mapper not being able to get exclusive mode. Uh, that filter driver is still early alpha. This still got some issues with it. Um, we're spitballing back and forth. I've been keeping in touch with them. We're trying to figure out ways to make sure that that uh, filter driver is able to communicate with applications because that's what generates the whitelist um, or the, the, the list of the applications that are allowed to access these devices is they have to first communicate with HID Guardian, ask permission, and get whitelisted first. Um, that communication between a application and a uh, driver is not easy it's not something that's easy to do um, driver uh, if you're using the registry as a medium drivers want to access a protected part of the registry uh, that isn't accessible by user applications unless you get a UAC prompt and uh, that's not a good way to go about things because every time Input Mapper launches, you don't want to have to be clicking yes, allow this, because uh, that really defeats the purpose of a you know a hands-off, always, always running, always working uh, user experience. So um, to get around that, Benjamin developed a service uh, that runs in the background that applications can communicate with through a uh, user mode library, and that's been having a little. It's a little shaky. Um, Sometimes the user mode library isn't building properly, so I'm not able to access that in, in input mapper. Uh, sometimes the service uh, refuses or closed pipes that are open, um, not allowing applications to clean up after themselves and de-whitelist themselves. Uh, so you know we're I've looked at it a little bit, uh, you know, shot them a couple ideas, things that you can do to maybe get rid of using the registry and in turn the service. Um, but as a interim fix and possibly even a fix for input mapper going forward, uh, I think the approach is, um, sorry for geeking out on you guys too much if you don't understand too much of this, um, but the approach that I'm going to take going forward is I think I'm going to ge generate a, uh, a service of our own um, just for input mapper and I'll hook that into a, a WMI uh, event viewer um, or event manager. And what that is, it's a kind of like a database uh, that exists within Windows that contains information about pretty much everything. And you access it by something that look very much like, you know, database or SQL uh, queries and instructions. Um, but there is a event that you can subscribe to in there that gets notification when a process is created or uh, deleted. So I think by hooking, by creating a service that hooks that event, um, I can detect if Input Mapper is launching, um, and in turn, if it is launching, I can then automatically whitelist that process ID uh, into the registry, and the service that I create should automatically be able to access the protected part of the registry because the service runs in an elevated mode, so it can access protected parts of the registry. So, um, and the benefit of this may be. Um, I might be getting ahead of myself, but it might also be backwards compatible back to Input Mapper 1.6. Uh, because basically, the application itself doesn't really need to communicate with uh, HID Guardian or the Cerberus library in order for it to be granted exclusive access to these devices. The driver, the filter driver, just needs to know that the process that wants to access these controllers is whitelisted and so since you know you don't need to do that from within the application since I can do that from a service 
I might be able to uh, get away with, you know, not having to make any changes to Input Mapper 1.6 and to um, automatically whitelist the process through this service. So um, that's what I'm going to be working on this week. It's something that I just, you know, came up with this morning. So um, no actual uh, practical uh, examples or working demonstrations or anything like that yet. So. Um, Beyond that, uh, I just want to keep mentioning to people, uh, these YouTube comments are not for support. Um, if I ask you for things like, you know, screenshots and uh, logs and all that stuff, you can't post it here, so it's really of no help. Um, not to mention that it just makes me, you know, I have hundreds of videos up. It, uh, I can't keep track of everything and everywhere and all these people and all you know, the different issues. So we do have a website. And we have a support section on that website. Um, go there, submit a ticket. There'll be a little uh, text box at the bottom that'll walk you through what logs I need. Um, you know, it'll help you. You know, grab what you need. Um, Input Mapper 1.7 is right now the best way to get me logs because it does an entire dump, uh, which has a lot of useful information for me. Um, excuse me. So. Uh, if you're using 1.7, make sure you utilize that, uh, get that dumped to me. Um, I am going to be doing a new release of 1.7 this morning. Um, I'm going to get rid of HID Guardian um, from within it because that's what's keeping it from launching on a lot of people's systems because HID Guardian installs by default and it's not starting properly anymore with some new Windows update. I don't know what happened. Uh, so. I'm going to nix that out and it should launch in it. It's also going to contain a couple other um, updates and all that stuff I've talked about in the past regarding the on-screen keyboard and some functionality there. So, um, Well, that'll about do it. Um, I'm still kind of low-tech. I'm actually, I got my cell phone strapped to the camera or strapped to the tripod here uh, because the camera lens is still being shipped back to me. It's, it is supposedly fixed. So hopefully we'll be back to my normal setup next week. Um, hopefully audio is okay. I'm recording on this guy here, so hopefully that sounds okay. If not, I really don't feel like doing this again. So, uh, All right, guys, that'll do it. I'll see you next week. Everybody have a good one.